You can get started building apps with user logins and permissions by going to the project menu and configuring app authentication. And that's it. By selecting that, you've enabled app authentication. This by itself doesn't change anything in the rest of your app. It just enables you to start using auth related features. So for instance, here in this project, I have a home page, which maybe I'm fine with that being publicly accessible, but I also have this other page, the my requests page. And here I want users to have to log in to access this. So I can go to the page tab and I can specify under role needed, um, basically anything that is not the anonymous role. So that will require users log in. And in this app, I have these three different roles defined. I can just go ahead and choose the lowest non-anonymous role here. And if I go ahead and hit publish, then I can see that I can access the homepage. But if I try to go to slash my requests, I'm forced to log in. Now the default auth provider is Plasmic Auth, which means users sign into Plasmic to access your app. This makes it easy to get started without any additional setup. And this is often a good fit for various internal apps and such. You can alternatively switch to a custom auth provider by going back to the app authentication configuration. And under settings, you can switch to custom auth and you can follow our developer docs on how to get started with that. Here you can also configure what are the available defined roles in your app, starting from the highest privilege to the lowest privilege. So every role can do everything that the next role down can do. And you can also, from the permissions tab, this is where you define who is place. So you can go ahead and add individual users, like so. You can add entire domains. You can add um, specific groups that you may have already defined in your user directory. And, um, and for each of these, you can assign what role they are given. And you can also define what happens for anyone not on this list, whether anyone can sign into the app or whether it's just the users that are allowed on this list, in which case I set uh, general access to denied. Just now we relied on the app forcing us to log in when accessing a certain page, but you can also just add login and logout buttons. So maybe on the home page, I'm gonna go ahead and add a button. I'm gonna call it login. And on the right, I'm gonna, uh, in response to clicks, I'm gonna make it login, like so. And that's also how the logout button on the My Requests page works. One of the most important things that authentication gives you is this notion of the current user. You can access the information about whoever is the currently logged in user from anywhere you can use a dynamic value. So for instance, you can make text display information about the current user. I'm gonna select this text and on the right, I'm gonna set it to a dynamic value that is the current user's email. Now, this isn't gonna show anything because by default, we're viewing the app as a logged out user, but I can switch to another user listed here and see what they would see. You can also do anything else you can do with dynamic values, such as setting content to be conditionally shown or hidden based on who the current user is. Now, note that everything we've talked about so far is not a security mechanism. Um, for instance, when you hide something based on the user's info, that's just changing the appearance of the app. The way to secure your app is by actually configuring your data operations or your backend operations. Um, so for instance, here I have a button that I only want admins to be able to execute. And maybe I only want admins to be able to see it so I can configure that from the visibility. But even if I hide it from all other users, I still need to know to configure the um, this actual data update here. So in response to clicks, this button basically does this Airtable update. And in this configuration panel, there is a min role here. And this is where I can specify what is role needed to execute this. And I can say only admins can go ahead and execute this for instance. As another example, this list of records, let's say we want to make sure that the current user can only see their own records listed here. So this list comes from uh, some data that we fetched from Airtable specified here. And in the set of data that we fetch, 
we're specifying some filters. So we're filtering, we're only fetching records where the email is equal to the current user's email address. This is actually enough to make sure that every user is only able to see their own records. So this is a security mechanism as well, and we'll cover security in more depth in a separate video.